I just finished my first semester of grad school, so here are some of my thoughts about what grad school is like and what I can advise to people who are entering grad school. So a little background first, I'm currently taking my master's in physics at the Ateneo de Manila University in Quezon City, Philippines, and I also got my bachelor's degree in physics from Ateneo way back in 2020. It's currently 2024, which means that there was a four-year gap between my finishing my undergrad and getting into graduate studies. So there was quite a bit of a learning curve of my trying to remember what it's like to be a student again and of course remembering everything I learned back in undergrad. Because of that gap I had to take two refresher courses so I had to take math one which is basically a review of vector analysis and math two which was a review on ordinary differential equations and I was taking these refresher courses on top of the regular grad school courses which for the first semester were quantum mechanics one, theoretical mechanics one, and graduate colloquium. So I had a total of five subjects in my first semester for a total of 13 units. And that brings me to my first and honestly biggest takeaway about grad school is that it is a completely different beast from undergrad because I remember back in undergrad, I was doing 28, I think at one point I reached 30, 31 units in one semester. And so going into grad school, I thought, hey, 13 units, totally fine. I've done worse. In fact, I think my first semester ever in undergrad, like my freshman year, I had 18 units, I think. So 13 units, it felt like an underload. And I have underloaded in the past in my undergrad. And I thought, hey, you know what? This is going to be a breeze because my one semester where I did underload, it was really easy and I just aced everything. So I thought like, hey, grad school is going to be just like that since I have 13 units. And boy, was I wrong because your grad school classes, understandably so, are so, so much harder than your undergraduate classes. It also doesn't help that passing was a B. Like I remember in my undergrad, there was this saying that C's get degrees, but that doesn't work out in grad school because C is actually failing already. And so adding that layer, plus the fact that again, I had been out of school for four years at this point. So again, there was that learning curve. It, it was 10, 12 times harder for me to catch up. So yeah, don't underestimate your grad school classes. Class schedule wise, it's actually not a problem. You're gonna think you're gonna have a lot of time, but you actually don't. The classes themselves were actually very fun. I did enjoy my classes and it really helped that I had great teachers who really made learning fun and entertaining for me. But the thing is um, the workload, the workload is something else. Now, problem sets, they're normal in undergrad. As, and I know that sometimes one question will take up to three pages, but the amount of rigor that you're going to need in grad school and the amount of work you're going to have to do for a single prop set is a, on a completely different level as compared to undergrad. So I would open up the problem set and I'd be like, oh, cool, it's just 10 questions, you know, no big deal. But what they forgot to mention is that the solution for each problem would probably take around five to six pages back to back. And that's already not including all the mistakes you're going to make along the way and the multiple times you'll have to do it all over again because you realize your approach was wrong. So one problem set could actually take like a week. Actually, I think it has actually gotten to the point where I took almost a week for one problem set just because of how much rigor is required, which brings me to my first piece of advice for grad school, which is actually the first piece of advice that one of my friends told me because he also came from Ateneo grad school. And the first thing he said when he told me, when he found out that I was going to grad school was don't procrastinate at all. The moment you get your problem set, do it immediately. And honestly, that has saved me so many times. And if there's one piece of advice that I can give to anyone entering grad school, it's that don't think that just because it's still June a week, you have time. The moment you get your prop set, start it immediately. And honestly, just expect grad school to completely take over your life because I was and still am a model while I'm in grad school, but it has reached a point wherein I would show up to shoots and rehearsals, but I would still be studying and doing problem sets while in shoot or while in rehearsal, while I was waiting for my turn. Don't 
plan too much of a social life if you're in grad school. I'm sorry if that sounds bad, but yeah, it's really going to take all your attention and you have to be sure that this is something you really want because it's not an easy walk in the park. I'll be completely honest. Do be aware though that your profs are going to expect so much more from you being a grad student. They're not going to handle you with kid gloves anymore. So they're going to expect you to be more mature and to be more organized and more responsible with what you're doing. So there's, I would say, a bit less leeway for mess ups. So really stay organized. If you have a planner, use it properly. I personally use a spreadsheet. It's been very helpful for me to keep track of what I'm doing. And yeah. Because when you're in grad school, you're an adult, you're no longer a kid, 18 and undergrad. So there are definitely heightened expectations from you. Speaking of expectations, there is one thing very unique to the grad school experience. And that's the fact that you are expected to publish your own research before you're able to graduate from grad school. And with that in mind, we have graduate colloquium as early as your first semester in your first year. So a little context. In Ateneo, at least, our master's program is two years. And immediately in our first year, first semester, we start working on our thesis. My friends have told me and my profs also that usually what delays people from grad is the thesis and not the classes. So first semester, palang, we're already working on our thesis, which is colloquium. And colloquium for your first semester in your first year is kind of narrowing down what you want your topic to be for your final thesis. So what we would do was that every week, we had to select a paper that was related to whatever topic we wanted to research on, and then we had to present that. And of course, we would get grilled on the paper. Funny thing, actually, while presenting it, I would make the mistake of saying we when I'm referring to the researchers. Pa parang feeling, diba? Parang research ko yon, pero di talaga eh. But uh, anyway, they ask you about the research and in doing that, they're not only training you to be able to understand and read research papers effectively, but they're also training you how to be able to handle the heat or pressure when you're actually presenting in front of a committee, which is something I really, really appreciated because while I'm, I, I could be naive at this point since it has only been a first semester, but I feel that because I have that training in my first semester, palang, I feel I'd be more prepared come my final thesis time but let's see what happens so yeah this is very different from my undergrad experience wherein we started our thesis work in junior year also i'm starting to realize that this video is less on grad school thoughts and experiences and more on undergrad versus grad uh, oh well but yeah despite the heavy workload and all the stress i can honestly truly say that i am really enjoying the grad school experience so far and I think that that's in no small part due to the fact that I have really great and amazing teachers who are so passionate about physics and they're so enthusiastic about their, their subject matter. And I can't help but feel infected by their love and passion for it. So even if I'm tired, even if I'm sick, I actually don't notice the time passing because they're making the learning so fun and entertaining. And you fall in love with physics more and more every day, honestly, despite the stress of it. It's hard not to fall in love with physics more. And I'm just so blessed and lucky to be part of this community, this department where we all care about each other. And it's not just the grades, because at least from my experience, my teachers, they don't just care about your grades. They actually care if you're doing fine. Like my teachers have actually asked like, hey, are you okay? Um, do, do you feel like stress, pressure, you know, please don't give up. They would give me pep talks. And that made a big difference when you feel that your teachers care about you and you're not just another statistic to them. You're not just another number. You're not just another lesson, another grade to be graded. That's a weird choice of words, but you get what I mean, because at least in my department and in my experience, my teachers treat me as human and you really feel that they care about you. And I'm just so lucky to be in this community. Honestly, I feel that I had an advantage because in my first semester, I was working in the Ateneo Roses laboratory and I did have coworkers who have taken their masters in physics already. And they were there to help me and advise me and help me keep going even when I felt like giving up. So that was something that honestly is priceless. 
And I know that the workload can really isolate you. I almost went hermit mode several times actually, but I'm just very lucky that I have the support system to get me out of there and really help me keep pushing forward. So support system, I believe, and community is very, very important in grad school. That has been my grad school experience so far. It has only been one semester. So let's see what the next semesters have to offer. I will keep you guys updated on my journey. So if you want to stay in the loop, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.